in this video, I will be showing you an extremely easy way to understand and to remember the pharmacology behind drugs used to manage Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that leads to symptoms of dementia. The pathophysiology of this condition is very complex and it is not entirely understood. However, to understand the pharmacology of drugs used to manage Alzheimer's disease, all you need to remember are two very important hypotheses behind Alzheimer's disease. The first one is that it is due to high glutamate levels. The second is that it is also due to low acetylcholine levels. So first, let's focus on low acetylcholine or low ACH. So typically, we have cholinergic neurons that produce acetylcholine. This acetylcholine is thought to be responsible for memory and cognition. So if the acetylcholine levels are low, then it's fair to assume that the memory and the cognition that is typically responsible for would be affected. Patients with Alzheimer's disease also have high glutamate. So let's look into why this is so. Well, in patients with Alzheimer's disease, they have an accumulation of beta amyloid proteins. So these beta amyloid proteins accumulate in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's. The accumulated beta amyloid proteins leads to an abnormal rise in extrasynaptic glutamate levels. When this glutamate binds to an NMDA receptor, this leads to an influx of calcium. This excess calcium ultimately causes cells to rupture and die. So this is why high glutamate levels play such a crucial role in Alzheimer's disease. So to put it simply, just remember that high glutamate occurs due to an accumulation of beta amyloid proteins. When the glutamate binds to NMDA receptors, this causes a massive influx of calcium which causes cells to rupture and die. So the treatment options for Alzheimer's disease can be broken down into two main groups. The first one being NMDA receptor antagonists and the second one being cholinesterase inhibitors. So to put it simply, in Alzheimer's disease, patients have high glutamate and low ACH. And the goal of the drugs used to treat Alzheimer's disease needs to counteract these levels. So to counteract the high glutamate levels, we use NMDA receptor antagonists. And to counteract the low ACH levels, we use cholinesterase inhibitors. The cholinesterase inhibitors will prevent ACH from being broken down so that there will no longer be low levels of ACH. You can use the name Alzheimer's to remember this fact. So you can use the AL in Alzheimer's to remember that ACH is low. AL, ACH is low. So we use cholinesterase inhibitors. Then we can use the I in Alzheimer's to remember that glutamate is high. So high glutamate needs to be treated with NMDA receptor antagonists. So let's do a quick pop quiz. Is ACH high or low in Alzheimer's disease? If you said low, then you are absolutely correct. Remember, AL, ACH is low. And pop quiz number two, is glutamate high or low in Alzheimer's disease? Remember, use the I in Alzheimer's disease to remember that glutamate is high. And to combat the high glutamate levels in Alzheimer's disease, we use NMDA receptor antagonists. And to combat the low ACH in Alzheimer's disease, we use cholinesterase inhibitors. Now let's take a closer look at the pharmacology of cholinesterase inhibitors to counteract the low ACH that is seen in Alzheimer's disease. 
Normally, cholinergic neurons in the brain make acetylcholine. Two substances are needed to make acetylcholine. These are acetylcoenzyme A or acetyl-CoA and choline. This reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called choline acetyltransferase. Once neuronal impulses arrive, the synthesized acetylcholine is then released into the synaptic cleft. Then once the synthesized acetylcholine is in the synaptic cleft, it then interacts with acetylcholine receptors located on the postsynaptic neurons. At this point, acetylcholine can be broken down by two enzymes. The first one being acetylcholinesterase and the second one being butyrylcholinesterase. When acetylcholine is broken down by these enzymes, acetylcholine is converted to choline and acetate, thus terminating stimulating signals. Now remember, in a patient with Alzheimer's disease, their ACH levels are low, which leads to poor memory and cognition. So, to combat this, we use cholinesterase inhibitors. Cholinesterase inhibitors prevent ACH from being broken down. So, essentially, cholinesterase inhibitors increases the amount of available ACH and increases the duration of action of ACH. So, you can see that cholinesterase inhibitors are extremely important for patients with Alzheimer's disease. Do you know the names of the cholinesterase inhibitors commonly prescribed to patients with Alzheimer's disease? Well, if not, that's fine. That's why you're here. So there are three main drugs that you need to remember. Donepazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. Out of all of these cholinesterase inhibitors, it's important to note that rivastigmine is the only one that shows significant inhibition of both acetylcholinesterase and butyrylcholinesterase. Common side effects of these medications include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. However, they can be even more serious and include side effects such as a lack of appetite and substantial weight loss as well as a slow heart rate. So remember, use the AL in Alzheimer's to remember that ACH is low. To counteract the low ACH levels, we use cholinesterase inhibitors. The names of these cholinesterase inhibitors are donepazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. Now let's take a closer look at the other drug class used to treat Alzheimer's disease which is the NMDA receptor antagonist. So normally, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that is good for memory and learning. However, in conditions like Alzheimer's disease, when there is an abnormal excess of high glutamate, this causes glutamate to bind to NMDA receptors and release excess calcium that can cause neurons to be damaged and die. So to prevent the death of neurons that can be triggered by high glutamate levels, to counteract this, we use NMDA receptor antagonists. So remember that excess beta amyloid proteins can lead to excess glutamate. This excess glutamate can cause excitotoxicity. So even though glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that's good for memory and learning, if there is too much of it, it actually leads to excitotoxicity because of the excess calcium leads to rupture and death of neurons. So instead of just a little bit of calcium being released, what happens in Alzheimer's disease, there is an excess influx of calcium which causes excitotoxicity and damage and death to neurons. So we have to prevent this excitotoxicity, and we can do this with NMDA receptor antagonists. These NMDA receptor antagonists limit the calcium influx 
therefore limiting excitotoxicity and limiting cell death. One such NMDA receptor antagonist is memantine. It is extremely important to note that cholinesterase inhibitors and NMDA receptor antagonists do not cure Alzheimer's disease or stop the underlying neurodegenerative processes. But what they can do is provide temporary relief of symptoms. Now let's test your knowledge on the pharmacology of Alzheimer's drugs. An 81-year-old male is brought to the emergency department after an episode of syncope. The patient is found to have episodic bradyarrhythmia and AV block. He takes medications for Alzheimer's disease and hypertension. Which medication is the most likely cause of his presenting symptoms? A. Memantine, B. Lisinopril, or C. Denepazil. If you want to come up with the answer on your own, then pause the video here. If not, I'm about to tell you the answer, which is option C, denepozil. So recall that denepozil is a cholinesterase inhibitor. Cholinesterase inhibitors can cause mild side effects such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. However, they can also cause more serious side effects such as a slowed heart rate which can be evident from the episodic bradyarrhythmia and AV block that is seen in this question. Do you remember the other cholinesterase inhibitors that can be used in patients with Alzheimer's disease? Well, they are rivastigmine, denepozil, and galantamine. So remember that cholinesterase inhibitors increase the levels of ACH or acetylcholine. This leads to an enhanced parasympathetic tone, which then can cause AV block, bradycardia, and presyncope. Question number two. An 81-year-old male is brought to the office due to forgetfulness. He misplaces objects, forgets conversations, and got lost driving home. Neuro exam reveals short-term memory deficits. If the patient is placed on a cholinesterase inhibitor, what results can be expected? A. A delayed progression of disease. B. Improved symptoms with no effect on disease progression. Or C. No effect on cognitive performance. If you want to come up with the answer on your own, then pause the video here. If not, I'm about to tell you the answer, which is... Option B. Improved symptoms with no effect on disease progression. Question number three. An 81-year-old male is brought to the office due to forgetfulness. He misplaces objects, forgets conversations, and got lost driving home. Near exam reveals short-term memory deficit. MRI reveals diffuse cortical atrophy. A drug with what mechanism of action would be most beneficial for the patient? A. Increased NMDA receptor activity. B. Decreased calcium influx through NMDA receptors. C. Increased synaptic ACH degradation. If you need time to think on the answer, then pause the video here. If not, the answer is option B. Decreased calcium influx through NMDA receptors. Recall that the accumulation of beta amyloid proteins cause excess glutamate. This excess glutamate can cause excitotoxicity due to an excess of influx of calcium ions. And this can lead to neurons to rupture and die. So that's why we use NMDA receptor antagonists to decrease calcium influx through the NMDA receptor. So that is a very good treatment option for patients with Alzheimer's disease. So option A is not correct because what we want to do is to decrease the activity at the NMDA receptors, not increase it. And option C is not correct because it says increase synaptic ACH degradation. If ACH is being degraded more, that means that the ACH levels would be low. And remember, AL in Alzheimer's disease, 
these patients already have a low ACH level, which causes the symptoms that they have. So to combat this, we need to use cholinesterase inhibitors to prevent the ACH from being degraded. So option C cannot be the answer. And to learn even more extremely high yield content like this, then all you have to do is click this video right here.